Let's get everything going. And let's get to the screen where I can see all your wonderful comments. Great. There we go. Good, good, good. And one more. All right. I think I'm up everywhere. People are watching. People are on. Colleen's on. Chuck Woody is on. Um, Bubbles and Sparkles is on. Michelle, Robin, welcome everyone. Victoria, Defeer, welcome. Defeer Photo, welcome. And uh, happy InDesign Tuesday. I also see um, Paula Lampier on Twitter, as well as, uh, I didn't catch that one, it was Burkick. If I missed that, sorry. Uh, but let's go ahead and get going here. We're going to start our, kick our InDesign Tuesday off. We're going to do a little mixture of desktop design with some mobile elements added in, thanks to Adobe Capture CC. And uh, David Lester, Debbie, and Anel, welcome as well. Let's go ahead and get to it. Cindy, I see you over there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to give you a little bit of a walkthrough of what we're going to do first. So I've got InDesign open. I've also got Photoshop open in the background. We're going to do that a little bit later. Um, in InDesign, I've got my CC libraries that I work with all the time open. So there's a library I created at the beginning of the year called Adobe Live 2019. And so far, it's got colors, color themes, graphics, and templates in it. Thus far, we're going to add a couple new categories to it today, but colors are simple colors. Color themes are uh, five colors that are usually in harmony with each other. Not always, but usually. And that's what you're aiming for. And then graphics are graphics. So they can be vectors or images from um, pixel-based programs like Photoshop. And then last but not least, I've got a template here that we're going to work with. I'm going to show you um, how I got that template. So I was looking for something new to start with today. So I just went up to File, chose New. Oh, let's get out of Photoshop, actually. Let's go to InDesign. There we go. File, new, new document. And uh, in my new document dialog box, uh, it comes up and it shows me templates that I've used and documents I've used in the past. And of course, you can go to print and you can go to web and you can go to mobile and you can see all the various templates there. And these are all free for you to use. And all the ones with check marks are ones that I've used in the past. So like I said, I was kind of looking for something new. So I basically just came down to the bottom and I typed poster because I just wanted to look at what was beyond what's listed in the app. And of course, that will take you to the website where you will see even more InDesign templates based on what you typed in. So these are all kinds of different posters and brochures and newsletters and magazines and in this case, posters. Uh, but tons of different uh, templates to work with, work with. I'm going to keep this open for now. We're going to come back to it because I got an interesting use for it. But let's head back to InDesign. So I found, actually, that looks similar to it. I think the same person designed my template, designed this one as well. But I found my template. I, I downloaded it. It was free. Um, and then I just go ahead and open it up. And this is what the template gave me. Now, as I've said in the past, whether it's a Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign template, the templates... If they use special fonts, those fonts are always Adobe fonts and part of your Creative Cloud, so it will sync whatever fonts it needs. Sometimes the templates will include graphics. Sometimes they won't. Most times they don't, because it's really for you to put your own graphics in. Sometimes they'll include, or most times they'll include paragraph styles and character styles. And usually the template is organized in layers. So if I look at my layers panel here, I can see that there's a background layer, an artboard, or artwork layer, and a text layer. So the artwork is the artwork, the text is the text, and the background is the background. So um, pretty simple design for this one. And I'm, I was trying to figure out why are they giving me two versions? Just because just the template designer decided to give you two versions. And at first, I didn't really realize what the difference was besides the kind of pinkish background in this one. This one doesn't have it. This one does. And then I realized, oh, the flowers are green and red on this one. And the flowers are blue and red on this one. So pick, take your pick, whichever one you want. You don't have to use both. 
Um, and of course, the text is just standard text. You can change it to say whatever you want, delete it, change the font, whatever you want to do. So today, we're not only going to use this template, but we're going to go get some elements from the world around us to make this design a little bit better. And what I mean by that is, like, for example, I'm not totally digging this font. Like this tropical party looks very plain, very not really tropical. <laughs> Doesn't say party to me. It just it's just plain text. It's a nice serif or a sans serif font, but eh, it could be better. So first thing I want to do is find a different font. And then um, I was as I was preparing for today, flipping through today's mail, I saw I got this uh, advertisement in the mail. And by the way, today has nothing to do with this advertisement. It's just a piece of, literally a piece of junk mail that came today. But every time I get a piece of mail, brochure, magazine, or whatever, I always look at it and say, hey, is there anything on here that I could use? Anything I might need? Anything I might want? So um, with that said, hang on, let me close the window here. With that said... There, I'm really not like this. This design does not jump out at me. There's nothing really crazy about this design that I like so much. But there are a couple things that I do like. I do like the font that Atlanta is in right there. I do like that. I like the look of that. And while I'm not crazy about the darkness of this overall color theme, you know, it's kind of like got a river or a lake or something in the background. I do like some of the colors in it. I like the blues in it. I like some of the greens in it. I like the really, really rich red down here at the bottom. So when I see a piece like that, first thing comes to mind is, hey, I could use some of that stuff. And and by the way, Amy says, I, I do that too. Um, Bernice here, hi there. Hello, Bernice, Michelle, hello. Um, so it's like, hey, first thing comes to mind is I can use some of this. I don't want to copy this design. I don't even like the design, but there are certain pieces of it I do like. So for example, this tropical party, first thing I'm going to do, uh, let's go ahead and grab the type tool and let's change it to upper and lower uh, case, Tropi tropical party. All right, so let's get it upper and lower case. I don't like it in all caps. Now that I got it in upper lower case, again, I want to use a font, something a little bit different than what I always use. So I always have my certain scripts. So I always have my certain sans serif fonts that I love and use all the time. But, you know, like I said, I like the Atlanta on here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab my phone. I have a, um, I have an iPhone here connected to the computer. It doesn't have to be connected to the computer other than just so you could see it. Otherwise, you wouldn't really see what I'm doing. So I've got the phone here and I've got it connected. So let's bring the phone up and the phone is right there. It is live so I can swipe and you're seeing me swipe and you're seeing the screen change. So in my Adobe folder is a program that we're going to use the upper right corner Adobe Capture. Now, uh, because people are going to come into this late, which program are you using? Which app are you using? So if I, if I don't see it, you mention it in the comments. Uh, but Adobe Capture is a free iOS and Android app that you can go get from your respective app store right now. So you can go get it from the iOS app store or from the Google Play store. Go download Adobe Capture. All it, re all it requires is for you to sign in. You can sign in with a social media account or with your Adobe ID. I'm signed in with my Adobe ID, the same Adobe ID I'm using for my Creative Cloud. So that way, when I launch Capture, it shows me that same library and all my library choices, but I'm in that same Adobe Live 2019 library. And as I scroll, I can see things that Capture recognizes. So Capture recognizes color themes, Capture recognizes uh, shapes, and basically, there are six types of things, if I'm not missing one, but I think there's at least six types of things you can capture. So at the very top, all assets, then there's materials. So it can capture materials, three-dimensional material, or materials that you would apply to three-dimensional objects in Adobe Dimension. It can capture type, which we're going to use in just a second. 
It can capture shapes. So that means you take a picture of something and it will convert it into a vector shape. It'll trace it for you. It, it can capture colors. I knew there was one more, there's seven. Um, it can, and looks are back now because looks were there originally and then looks got taken out and redone and then looks are back. And looks are similar to colors, but they're more for, primarily for video and you can use them in Photoshop as well. They're lookup tables or LUTs. So looks, if you want a video to look a certain way, have a certain tone to it, like if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you know how dark and, and blue most of the scenes are in Game of Thrones. So that would be considered a look. Um, patterns, which we're going to use also today. And the one I forgot was brushes. So you can actually create custom brushes for Photoshop, Illustrator, and Adobe Photoshop Sketch right in the app. And of course, since I'm, I'm ch I chose this Adobe Live 2019 library, the same one that's on my desktop and all my other mobile apps, um, whatever I create will appear in that library if I save it to the library. So let's tap on type. And it says, hey, transform your images into a variety of Creative Cloud uh, library assets to use with other apps. We know that. At the very bottom, there's two icons. There's a um, image icon on the left. That's me. That means, hey, you've already taken a picture of something that has type on it. Go ahead and find that picture. Or bring up the camera and take a picture of that item right now, which is what we're going to do. Um, now, the way this works, that Atlanta font, I don't know what it is. It's going to find either a best case scenario, that exact font. Worst case scenario, which is usually the case, something that looks really close to it. And that's all I care about. I'm not, I don't care that it's the exact font. I just like the look of it. And if, if we have in the Adobe fonts, a font that looks like this, that I don't have to spend my time trying to figure it out. Perfect. All right. So let's bring up the camera. And it's bringing up the camera and I'm moving the camera around. I'm going to move it closer to the word Atlanta. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and snap the button. Press the button. There we go. Okay, I can put this down now. So now I get handles because it's like, and it, before it used to try and guess what the type was. I'm glad it now gives us handles because you know what the type is that you're trying to get. So you can just move the handles around and say, this is the type I want you to look for this font. All right, so now I'll hit the uh, check mark down at the bottom. And uh, once I do that, it will start searching Adobe Library for similar fonts. Ooh, and it really messed up on what the word was. So let me tell it what, and, and it does that sometimes. That's why there's a change text at the bottom. So if I type in the word, which was Atlanta, there we go. Now, there, now I get some examples of what it thinks that font is or the closest thing to it in the Adobe Fonts library. So I really like Relation Regular. Um, relation Bold is even closer. Uh, relation to Bold, I, I'm not crazy about. Uh, modish, re modish Regular is kind of nice. Uh, Alicia Regular, not feeling that one. Not feeling those, not feeling that. And so it's giving me a nice variety. Um, the subr script regular can be okay too. And giving me a lot of nice choices, but I think I already made up my mind. I'm going to go all the way back up to the top here and I'm going to go with the relation bold. Now, again, that is an actual font. I, I, I would have found it eventually, maybe <laughs> if I would have started going through the list of fonts on Adobe fonts in the type menu. But this is found it based on that picture that it took. And now I can just hit save in the upper right corner. And what it will do is it will create a character style for that type or, or for, the, for that font that we just found and sync it to my library. So I'm going to put the phone down for a second. And we're going to switch over to back to InDesign. There we go. And there it is. So the character style just came in. Um, relation bold 32 and now I can go ahead and highlight this type and click on it boom there it is so my tropical party is now in that font I can make it bigger I can do whatever I want change what it says anything else I want because now it has found a font like that and made it 
available to me. All right, so, and you could keep going. Like, if you wanted to do two or three of those, you know, go get another one and sync that one and then experiment with which one you like best. You don't have to use just one. You can use as many as you want. Uh, but that's what it looks like uh, in the, I forgot what the font was already, Relation Bold, which is now up here. Okay, and you can keep doing that. So if you like, uh, you want to change this to something different, you could. And that's another reason why I retype this because we don't want a script in all caps. That would be horrible. Don't ever do that. All right, so next thing we're going to do. Um, now that I got the font that I want, I kind of want to go get some colors to go with it. So once again, we'll bring back up Capture. I'll bring it back up so you can see it. And there it is, the character style relation bold. And um, now I'm going to go in. And by the way, one more thing before we do that. Let's expose the character themes or color themes. That way you'll see which ones we have. All right. Now we'll go back to the phone. And uh, once again, I'm going to bring up the advertisement that came in the mail today. We'll grab the camera on the app. And we're gonna, this time we're gonna swipe over to colors. All right, so now you can see as I'm moving around, it's finding different colors in this document. Now, if I tap on a color, I'm telling it to freeze. So now once it's frozen, again, I can put this down. I haven't snapped the picture yet. The reason you freeze it is because Randomly, it moving around may not get you the color you want. You can spend a lot of time kind of moving your phone around trying to get exactly the right color. It's just easier to freeze it and you move the, the samplers around. So I want that dark blue up there. There we go. I want the lighter blue. That's really what I was aiming for. I want the this particular green. Let's get that green. I really want that punchy red. Let's get that red. And while we're at it, we'll get that gold. There we go. Get that nice gold there. All right. So that's my new color theme. Now, once I snap it, I can still make further adjustments on the photos. So for example, I'll go ahead and snap it. Now it's giving me each color and now it's giving me sliders to make my adjustments. And I can work in RGB, CMYK, whatever you want. So I can say, hey, you know, that red, or no, that blue really could be a little bluer. Let's go ahead and slide the slider for that. That red could really be a little redder. Let's move the slider for that. The gold I'm kind of okay with, maybe a little brighter and maybe a little golder. And you literally adjust the colors to whatever you want them to be. Um, and it's giving me swatches. I can also go to Harmony and I can go to, uh, go to the image as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. It will save that theme and it's bringing it back up again. I can even get the ones off the monitor if I want. So even if you found something on the internet, you can go ahead and do it from your screen. All right, so once again, we'll put the phone down. We'll switch back to InDesign. And there's my color theme already there at the very top of color themes in that library. So color theme number eight has appeared. So all I have to do is select this text and I want that blue. And now my text is that blue. Easy, easy peasy. Okay, next up. Um, and great to see you, Thomas. Thanks for approving the post. Next up, what we're going to do is something that InDesign unfortunately doesn't support directly. That's why we're going to use Photoshop in the interim. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. And what I'm also finding is that while I like this one so far, um, I actually like the blue flowers better. So I'm just going to steal the flowers from the second page and just move them up to the top. All right. Now, again, that's all on different layers. So that's an artwork layer, that's a text layer, and there's a background layer. Okay, I want the background layer because on the background layer, there's a rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and lock all these other layers for now. Oh, actually, not the background. I'm going to lock the other two layers. Okay, so now I'm just, I can't accidentally work on anything except, uh, I can't work on anything except the rectangle. I can't move anything by accident. So I got the rectangle in focus. Now I want to go put something in it. But this time I want to put a pattern in it. And remember I said I was going to keep the search results for Adobe Stock for those templates open, th these results? 
because I did this by accident once and I was like, hey, that looks kind of cool. Happy accidents, as Bob Ross likes to say. All right, so I'm going to bring back up the um, capture, Adobe Capture um, on my phone. And now instead of capturing colors, not looks, we're going to go to patterns. And this is what's kind of cool about this particular uh, page is that it turns each one of those icons, those thumbnails for the templates into kind of a nice, cool pattern here. So I'm going to go ahead and just tilt this until I like it. Maybe something like that. And before I, before I snap it, let me give you a quick walkthrough. So at the very top, you can choose color. You can choose grayscale. You can choose black and white. We're going to stick with color. You can choose whether or not it's going to be pixel-based or vector-based. So it now does vector-based patterns. You can choose um, the shape or design for the pattern. So I can go with that, I can go with that, I can go with that, which is what it was on, or go with that. And I actually kind of like, I don't like that. I like this one. So we'll stick to the one it was on. And then last but not least, you can also adjust things like the exposure. So I'm going to actually, I am going to adjust the exposure up a little higher. Cool. And let's go back to maybe that. Okay, great. And I'm just trying to decide on exposure. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and snap it. And you still have a way to continue adjusting it. So there's the shape, which is the triangle. You can move that around so you can still kind of create some cool looking things there. You can also rotate it. So you can get some different designs just by rotating the uh, original capture. Maybe something like something like that. Okay, once you're happy, you hit save, and that will save that pattern to the library. Now I'm going to do one more because I want to try one that doesn't have the uh, exposure adjustment. Maybe something. Ooh, yeah, there it is, right there. That's what I want. Boom. All right, cool. And I can even see the little thumbnails of the designs in there. All right, we'll save that one. So now that'll give me my second pattern. So again, you don't have to just do one, you can do as many as you want. Now we're gonna switch back over to, in, we're actually we're gonna switch back to InDesign. And I just wanna show you what happens. Even though I'm in InDesign, and InDesign shows me the same library with the color themes, the character styles, and the two patterns I just got, whenever something is grayed out, that means you can't use it in that application. So these patterns, even though they're here in the library, they're grayed out because InDesign doesn't support these patterns. Photoshop and Illustrator do. So if I head over to Photoshop, where I've got the same library with the same patterns, they're not grayed out. I can use them any way I want. Now, before I use them, I want to go ahead and create the same document size that I have over in InDesign. So let's pop back to InDesign. Let's go to our file menu. Let's come down to document setup and it's a five by seven. Okay, so now we know the size of this document. We can head back to Photoshop and make that exact size. Let's go new and let's go to print and let's go five by seven inches and we'll click create and that'll give us our five by seven. Now all I do is just literally click the pattern and it will add it to the, um, to the document. Now, let me undo that one, one time real quick. Let's undo, oh, sorry, before I undo it, there's a dialog box, there it is. Um, actually, I don't need to undo it. Here's a dialog box. When you, whenever you use a pattern, this dialog box presents itself so you can adjust it before you click OK. So for example, this is 25% of the size. I think they're too big. So I can maybe drop it down to 10%. There we go, smaller. And I'll click OK now. And one last thing is I will um, I will lower the opacity a bit. Now you could do this in InDesign to get it exactly the opacity you want, but we're already here. So we're gonna just because we don't want this to really stand out. We kind of want it to be a background, literally a background element. So maybe something like that. All right. So now that I've done that, um, I could. I believe I could just add this as a graphic maybe. So we just added it as a graphic to our library. So it's there already, or we could save it out and then place it in design. Hold on, how boring is that? 
All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and switch back. Uh, if we go to graphics, it is there. And now we can just go ahead and drag that in. And boom, it becomes part of our background. So now we've got our tropical party. And again, if it's still too much, you can always, again, lower the opacity while you're here in InDesign. So we can bring it down some more. Yeah, more like that. There we go. Cool. A nice pattern. All right. Um, so that was just using color type patterns. I'm going to show you one more. We don't need it for this, but just because it's cool. All right, let's bring up the phone one more time. All right, I've got the phone up. And again, we were in capture. This time I'm going to go to shapes. I'm just swiping over to shapes. And as you can see, it kind of just converts whatever you pointed at into like this bitmap, like really bad looking thing. <laughs> but there's more. If you were to, actually, let me cancel. Actually, uh, let me cancel out. Let's do it this way. Let's say I, I were at the very beginning. And instead of taking a picture, remember I said the bottom two icons were take a picture. Oops, sorry. I was trying to get out of the area. Either take a picture or open an existing photo. Well, I want to open an existing photo. So it says, where do you want to get that photo from? Do you want to get it from your camera roll? Meaning something on the phone. You want to get it from your Creative Cloud folder? Do you want to get it from your Lightroom photos? Do you want to get it from stock? Or do you want to get it from the file system in iOS in this case? I want to get it from Creative Cloud because I saved a photo, not in my Creative Cloud. There we go. We'll go to files. I saved a photo of a swimming pool. And what I want to do now is open that swimming pool and it will convert it into vectors. Now, we can play around with it. We can say, you know, darker, make it give us more contrast, more details, less details. So we get a slider for that. I would say something like that maybe. And then what's cool is once you snap it, then you've got this option to, you can, um, by the way, you have an eraser. So like if there was some stray marks or something that you wanted to get rid of, like down here, I'd say, no, I don't really need that mark. You can clean it up a little bit. So you can say, hey, I don't need uh, any of that. I don't need that. You can erase stuff out of it that you don't want. All right, but anyway, once you clean it up, it still looks bitmapped. You said this would be vector. Well, over on the right-hand side, there's a button called smooth. If I tap smooth, it is literally, once I tap on, is literally now going and tracing this. You can see the vectors already starting to appear in the bottom right. So it's tracing these, this, these elements and literally creating vectors from them. Now, again, depending on what it was, it may not be the smoothest vectors in the world, but they're vectors nonetheless. All right, so it's just about... Maybe about, uh, there's no progress bar, I'm guessing. It's about halfway through. It will continue. It's tracing the trees outside the window. So a lot of work going on in here that I'm not having to do myself. It's literally converting this into vector art, which you can open up an Illustrator and um, you can open up an Illustrator and continue to work on the vectors. So it's really getting some of those intricate details, especially in the trees outside the windows, the uh, emblem in the bottom of the pool. It's going through all of that work, doing that on my phone, converting it to vectors. Look at the detail in the, in the bottom of the pool. All right, it should just about be wrapping up now. I tested this image earlier on my newer phone, which did it quicker. This is an older phone I'm using now. So it's interesting to see those processors really do get faster as we get new phones. All right, it looks like it's done. I can now hit save. And it will save that as a shape to the library. So if I, again, if I head back over to InDesign, there it is, it came over as a graphic, and I could, if I needed this in, in this document, which I don't, if I needed it, I can actually pull this over, and I could 
place it and it's going to be transparent so even if i pull it in on top of other things uh it will be transparent so if you were trying to throw this retro vector pool party <laughs> you'd be all set again we don't need it for this but I, I would i would feel remiss if i didn't show you how the shapes work all right let's delete that and again if we double click on this it should open maybe open I might have to do it from Illustrator directly, which I don't have open. But anyway, if I open up Illustrator, I'd be able to open that from the library and work with the vectors themselves. All right, so that is it. Go you, go grab, and it's, again, here's the icon. That's what it looks like. Adobe Capture CC from your App Store or your Google Play Store. Um, it's free to download, free to use, free to install. It works best, of course, if you are a Creative Cloud member, because then you can sync everything to your libraries. But even if you're not a Creative Cloud member, you can still use the app and export stuff out that you make with the app. Um, and that's it. So go check it out, Adobe Capture CC. And we are at the end of our day, at the end of our stream anyway. All right, so I want to thank everyone for coming out and watching this. Again, go check out Capture CC in conjunction with, I, I used it with InDesign today, but I normally use it with Photoshop and Illustrator as well, um, or Premiere Pro, After Effects, use it with whatever you want to use it for to get colors, looks, brushes, materials, shapes, type, and colors if I didn't say it. <laughs> but there's you know seven of them all together. All right, so cool. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.